we're just believing God. Yeah. Amen. That's what we're doing. Amen. We are believing the Lord. And you know, when the word of God teaches us that the angels themselves are responsible for keeping plagues away from the righteous. The angels. You know, uh, if you remember last Sunday when I was dismissing, Dorothy had a prayer request about a daughter because they weren't, they wouldn't let them leave the country. And I saw an angel at that point covering. And before we even left the church, her flight took off and she's home safe. So we praise God. Amen. 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 So I said that to say, even as the word of the Lord says it, no plague, no plague. God gives his angels charge. Amen. So we praise the Lord for that. Now you understand, and I definitely understand what the Lord meant whenever he told me, everybody talking about 2020, the year of vision. Who, who got vision now? <laughs> 2020, year of vision. And if you really want to be specific, 2020 is not perfect vision. 2010 is. Because the way it is calculated, what you can see at 20 feet uh, uh, and somebody else can see at 10 feet, when you have 2010 vision, that literally means I can see at 20 feet what you can only see at 10 feet. So 2010 vision is so, 2020 is normal. It's regular vision. Just in case you didn't know. But my point is, let's look to God who sees everything. Yeah. And knows everything, which should be the main point anyway. Always be careful to not catch on to the latest thing that just sounds good. But I like, I like the research stuff. I do. I like the research stuff. And, of course, we're praying for those who have the coronavirus. We're praying for those who are going through with that and their family members. We're praying for them. South Carolina with all the hundreds of thousands of people around, uh, we've had two deaths, unfortunately. Uh, both of those were elderly people who already had some underlying health conditions anyway. And so we're seeing around the globe that is the major uh, push. So we're, we're going to take care of our people. Amen. 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 So we, we do what is natural to do and we know what to do in the supernatural. Amen. Amen. So we praise the Lord for that. And what we're not going to do is to focus in on what the devil is doing. We don't testify of the devil. We don't testify of him. We love each other. Love your neighbor as yourself. We're protecting. I, as I sent the text out, listen, if, if, if you want to keep your distance, then, then please stay home. If, you, if you're elderly, if, you're, if you already have a sick, you know, stay home. We, we, we love you. Amen. And we just want to make sure that where, wherever you are in your walk, wherever you are in your belief, that, that you operate on that level. Amen. Amen. Don't try to prove nothing to nobody because as Pastor Hayward said, this is a test. And so whatever you know is the only thing you can put on your test. Yes. If you hadn't been studying, if you hadn't been applying it, when the test come, the only answers you know is what, that you can put on the test is what you know. That is it. So I wonder who's going to grade the papers. Hallelujah to God. God is good now. And he's real. 
And he's not going to let us want for anything. He's not going to let us want for anything. Oh, boy, I tell you. Come on. Amen. 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 <laughs> I love it. Okay, good. Good, good, good. It was something else the Lord told me, and I couldn't remember, but so I needed to look in my phone to see what it was. Um, oh, when was it? This morning, the Lord, the Lord said to me, and, and yeah, I went somewhere else, but the reason why I talked about that angel is because the Lord said to me that there are angels here. Before I got here, he said there are angels here. There are angels here. Uh, we have angels on assignment, and they have to be on assignment because God charges the angels to do exactly what his bidding is. And a part of that is to keep us protected. We have angels in, in, in front of our homes. You know, just in case you don't know, yes, coronavirus is natural, but it is also a spirit. And we just thank the Lord that we have the spirit of power. Because he hadn't given us a spirit of fear, but he gave us a spirit of love, the spirit of power, and the spirit of a sound mind. Amen. And so I think it is important that this type of teaching goes out because there, there are people watching. There are people who have contacted us saying, you know, are, are, will the doors of your church be open? Will you be online? Yes. The local newspaper said, I know that you have something on Facebook. Uh, we, we want the, the um, site. We're getting all the churches, people who want to stay home and watch churches. What's the website? Here it is, you know. Where, wherever people are, they need to get the message. Don't fear. We don't have that spirit of fear. We don't. But we have a spirit of sound mind. And it's just as far as somebody saying, you know, I'm not afraid to jump off the top of the Feast of the Lord building. I'm not afraid. I will jump straight off of it. Yeah, we don't have a spirit of fear, but we have a spirit of a sound mind. So we need to treat this the same exact way. Yeah, yeah. We don't have the spirit of fear, but we do have the spirit of a sound mind. Amen. 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 All right. So we're going to go to the word of the Lord for us today. In Exodus chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. And Moses answered and said, but behold, they will not believe me. Nor hearken unto my voice, for they will say, The Lord hath not appeared unto thee. And the Lord said unto him, What is that in thine hand? I'm not saying God sighed, I just sighed. And he said, A rod. And he said, Cast it to the ground. And he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent, and Moses fled from before it. He got scared. I think I know why I sighed. Because if, if, if you want to um, read the, the, the whole situation, God kind of got um, upset. Because he's like, listen, I'm, I'm telling you what to do. And you keep giving me these excuses. And so he just finally, you know, went forth with that. So... Here we have Moses. He's telling God what's going on. He said, okay, well, what do you have in your hand? A rod. So he throws it down. It becomes a snake. And Moses runs from the snake. And the Lord said to Moses, put forth thine hand and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand and caught it. And it became a rod in his hand. So... Today, the Lord told me to teach on the subject, be a witness with what you have. Be a witness with what you have. Now, a month ago, where we didn't have all these strong suggestions, 
school was still in session and everything was just going and we heard about the coronavirus but it was like no huge huge deal to us a month ago literally a month ago today four Sundays ago the Lord taught us from the subject when fear is your witness he prophetically taught us when fear is your witness. And then the very next Sunday, he taught the second part of that. When fear is your witness, we are not to fear. We're simply to not fear. That's just it. We use common sense, but we're not going to be afraid. In other words, no, you're not going to scare me. Uh, let me say it like this. Does the devil have authority? Yes, the devil has authority. Does the devil have power? Yes, he has power. But he has what, what we could call a lower authority. We have a higher authority. Amen. He has a lower realm of power. We have a higher realm of power. The potency of our power is completely off the charts compared to what the devil has. And we have to know that not only do we have power, we have the spirit of power. Amen. That's why I said, how are you fearing? I didn't give you that spirit, I gave you the spirit of power. When you have the spirit of power, you're not afraid. When you have the spirit of love, you're not afraid. When you have the spirit of a sound mind, you're not afraid. Amen. So be a witness with what you have. What do you have? I've, uh, you know, it just is what it is. God did not give me a prophetic gift to the nations. I, I, I literally don't have the ability to just get up. Um, I ran. The Lord, yeah, thus saith the Lord. This, this, that, and to you. And, and to Turkey. And the Lord says this, this, that, and other to you. Afghanistan. The Lord... God didn't gift me like that. He didn't give me that type of prophetic gift. Amen. I have a prophetic gift, but that is not my calling with my prophetic gift. Right. Yeah. So I said that to say the prophets who do see on that level, the prophets who do hear on that level, that's who I'm listening to. And to, to hear them talk uh, uh, about what, what God is saying, especially, you, now, now let me help you. Everyone out there speaking is not of God. So let me help you. Those who talked about it before it got here, that's who you want to listen to. And these are the people that I'm listening to. And one of them said God showed him that with this strain of virus, God said, I got into the engineering of it. And those who act on faith and have faith, this virus cannot even affect. Mm. Amen. It can't even affect. That's what God showed one of, one of the prophets of our day. He said, this strain, God said, I got into the engineering of it. And it knows whenever there's an act of faith, like y'all being here and everything else y'all been doing as an act of faith, God said, it can't touch you. Oh. See, I know my gifting, I know my calling, and then when I see others who are gifted to hear God in this area and hear God from that area, somebody said, ooh, I want to hear that. Just go to my Facebook page, I share it. I'm not keeping it to myself, and you know, like some people do, and then they get out front and prophesy something that they don't already heard. I just put it out there. So if you hear me repeat it, you say, oh yeah, that's the same thing that he, he said. Just go out there and listen to him. So that we can, in all I get and get, understanding. Amen. Amen. Be a witness with what you have. Again, put forth that hand. Take it by the tail. And it became a rod again. God wants to use what we currently have. Oh. The Lord just shared me somebody who's trying to figure out what they have. What do I have? What do I have? Let's, let's get on that in a little bit. Let's just follow where God is going. I don't want you to think about, well, what do I have? 
that God can use. Let Just follow what God is saying. We'll, we'll get to, to that. God wants to use what we currently have. That's why what we've been waiting on in the future hasn't arrived. Because we're thinking, okay, Lord, all right. I know you're going to do it for me. You're going to future do it for me. God is like, uh, you do it for you. You do it for you. Oh, I love this. I love this. Y'all are interested and, 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 and you're really putting interest in it. I love it. So what God wants us to know is what we actually have is going to work. Amen. It's going to work. Amen. It has to because he's commanded it to work. Amen. He has commanded it to work. Now, when the Holy Spirit is, is, is just not showing this to me, and so he's going somewhere. I don't know where we're going to end up, but the Holy Spirit always leads us aright. The Holy Spirit just asked me a question. Did Pharaoh let God's people go as soon as he turned that rod into a snake? No. No. So it's like, you sent me here and... The rod turned to a snake, and then he had his magicians to come, and their rods turned into snakes. But Moses' snake ate up those snakes, but he still didn't heed the word of the Lord. So what was the purpose of that? That purpose was simply because Moses said, they're not going to believe that you sent me. He said, okay, so that's why we have to follow. The, the rod turning into a snake was just to prove I sent you. That was it. That was it. Like I said, I didn't know where we were going. The Holy Spirit just said all this just now. The Holy Spirit said some things you have that God wants to use is just to prove to people that he sent you. Just to prove. That he sent you. And it's something you already have. You already have it. God wants to use it. Oh my goodness. God wants to use what we currently have. That's why we, that's why what we've been waiting on in the future hasn't arrived. Our upcoming miracle will be based on our current possession. I believe God's going to bless me with so much money. What can you currently do to make so much money? What do you currently have? We're thinking God's going, going to just create something else. No, 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 no. Well, you know, you've been preaching, Apostle Wall, that, that God said, I'm going to do a new thing. Yes. Has your rod ever turned into a snake? No. Did it turn to? Yeah, that's a new thing. I'm going to do a new thing. I showed you. Yes, you did, Lord. You showed me, and you're showing us. I'm going to do a new thing with what you currently have, something that hasn't been done before. Ooh, I didn't know all this when, when I got up. So I feel like I'm sitting in the pews. I'm just getting happy. Wow. He's going to do a new thing. Now the Holy Spirit says, there are some things that we've tried to do, and we call it failure. And God calls it, no, just not yet. It did not fail. It just wasn't the season. You don't get strawberries growing in January. Just wasn't the season. It's not you didn't bless my seed, Lord. It's just not the time for strawberries. It's just not the time. Just not the time. Try it again. Ugh. Try to open the business again. Try to do this again. I don't know, Lord. 
fear of failure. We don't operate in fear. Okay, all right. Maybe that was just for two people, but thank God for the two that got that. Oh, it helped me. It helped me. But here's the two. Mark 6, 35 through 38. And when the day was now far spent, his disciples came unto him and said, uh, this is a desert place. And now the time is far past. In other words, we've been out here a long time, Jesus. And you got all these people out here. Um, now, this is my suggestion, Jesus. Uh, send them away that they may go into the country round about. You know, there's a lot of places that into the villages and buy, them, buy themselves bread for, for they have nothing to eat. <laughs> Somebody said, aha, I know where you're going. Follow me. Don't run up ahead. You might make a wrong turn. He answered and said, verse 37, he answered and said unto them, give ye them to eat. What? God tells you, do this. I don't have that. Mm. Give ye them to eat. And they say unto him, shall we go and buy 200 penny worth of bread and give them to eat? You want us to go buy food for all these people? Well, one little note, just so you know, the disciples were not poor. They had money to buy food for all those people. Huh, just in case you didn't know. So, you want us to go and buy? My gracious, day, that's, that's, what, what is that? What is that? This is the part we think we have to go and get something. God is saying, use what you already have. I don't think, I don't think, no, no, no. This, this task is just, it's too big. I, I'm going to use what you already have. He said unto them, how many loaves have ye? Go and see. And when they knew, they say five. Got five loaves and two fishes. Jesus needs us to become aware. That's why God asked the question, what do you have? Wow, wow. Now, Reggie, Jesus is asking the question, what do you have? What do you have? What do we have? Go, go and see. You never know what you have until you literally go and see. Please take this, everybody, because I'm telling you, I'm being ministered to right now. Go and see what you, I don't have, go and see. Go, go look at your business plan again. Go, go in your garage. Go, go and see. Oh, man, I need, I need money for so-and-so. Go, go look and see what you have that you're not using. Sell it. Sell it on Amazon. Sell it on eBay. Great thing. I didn't even realize I had this. And somebody gave me $200 for this. Well, let me see what else I... What do you have? Go and see. I'm telling everybody, go and see what you have. Because we have forgotten some of the things that we actually have. We forgot. Jesus needs us to become aware of the reality of our current status so that he can perform the miracle. What do you have? Go and see what you currently have. All right. First Kings 17. Somebody said, oh, what about the rest of the, you already know the rest of the story, but just in case you don't know, Jesus took it, he blessed it, and he broke it. And he said, listen, send it out. After he told them, get them in companies of 50s and, 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 and the such like. So whatever we have, we can give it to Jesus for service, and he will take it. And the next thing he will do is he will bless it. Then he will break it. Why did he break it? To start the distribution of it. That is where prosperity comes. 
Everything, you've heard me say this before, everything we do is for somebody else. You've never seen a tree eat its own fruit. Everything we produce is for somebody else. That's where the multiplication comes in. You want God to multiply? Be willing to give. I want to give of my service. I want to give. I want to give. I want to distribute. Hallelujah. But make sure he has it first and he's blessed it. Then comes the distribution. 1 Kings 17, 8 through 15. And the word of the Lord came unto him saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks, and he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. So the Lord came to him and said, uh, uh, Leave here and go to Zarephath. I commanded somebody to take care of you. And so he saw the woman and, and said, Give me some water. And so she was going to give him some water. He said, wait, 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 come back. Matter of fact, uh, give me a morsel of bread to go with it. And she said, as the Lord thy God liveth, the way we say it today is I swear to God. As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I'm gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and die. Because there was a famine. So she said, listen, I, I, I swear before God, all I have is just a little meal. And I'm here getting a couple sticks so we can go ahead. Me and my son can eat this. And there's nothing else left. Then after this, we're going to die. That's all I have. Be a witness with what you have. We're just going to eat it and die. I know we're going to die. We're going to die of starvation. We're going to die of thirst because of the famine. Mm, mm, mm. And Elijah said unto her, fear not. How much you're going to die? Don't fear. Oh, God is talking to us. Yes. Don't fear. Yes. You're not going to die. I don't care if it's the coronavirus or whatever. You're not going to die. Well, this strain of the coronavirus. Coronavirus has been out for a long time. And Elijah said unto her, fear not. Go and do as thou hast said. Go do as you have said. You know, make a cake for you and your son. But make me therefore a little cake first and bring it to me. And after, make for thee and for thy son. We don't read that they have even exchanged pleasantries. Wow. Uh, hi, I'm Prophet Elijah, and your name is? <laughs> no, no. We just read, he saw, hey, give me some water. As a matter of fact, make me a cake. Well, oh, oh, that's all y'all have? Well, that's all you have. Make mine first. <laughs> is that not what the Bible says? Make mine first. Then you can make it for you. Don't be afraid. No, don't, 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 don't be worried about that. But make mine first. And then, you know, make for you and your son. Whew, gracious day. This had to be back in the Bible days. <laughs> Today you go to somebody's house. Oh, I'm sorry. We don't have this, that, and other stuff. Well, whatever. We don't have enough for everybody. Well, <laughs> give it to me first. Then whatever's left over, you can eat. Wait right now, you you a guest. This is my house. This is my house. I'm so glad Jesus didn't wait and come to America. Or well, none of the Bible characters. That would have been something else. Who do you think you're talking? Oh man, it would have been something. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel. Oh, 
Oh, yes, thank you for reminding me, Holy Spirit. Whenever, please watch this. Watch, watch, watch this, please. When Elijah said to go and to do, the word of the Lord came. The word of the Lord came. He started to prophesy. There is going to come a moment when you are willing to give, when you're willing to use whatever you have, that the word of the Lord is going to come to you. I promise you. When you say yes, Lord, she hadn't said, she hadn't said yes, but see, God doesn't look at out of the Oh, he ponders the heart. Word of the Lord comes. For thus said the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste. In other words, you're talking about you have a little bit? Thus said the Lord, you're never going to run out. Neither shall the crews of oil fail. You're going to always have meal. You're going to always have oil. How in the world? I can't get it. When God says you're going to have, you're going to have. If you give it to me first. I don't know if it was tithes, if she just gave 10%. That's why we call it first fruits. We give to God first. Before I buy a stick of bubble gum, God is definitely going to get, some people do that. That's first fruits. Uh Uh-uh. Let me take out my tithes and offerings. Now, before I do anything else, first fruits, then God blesses the remainder and causes it to multiply, multiply, multiply. Hallelujah. The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the crews of oil fail. When I just said that, the, the spirit of prophecy was on me. So I'm saying that to everyone here and those listening and watching, I'm telling you the barrel, your barrel of meal, your barrel, your barrel, all those listening and watching, your barrel of meal shall not waste. Neither shall the crews of oil fail. Shall not. Shall not. Thank you, Jesus. Until things can happen all by themselves. Until the day the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth because it had been a drought. There was a drought. So don't worry, I'm going to take care of you. Don't worry about this stuff. I'm going to take care of you. God is saying, I'm going to take care of you. He is a caring God. And God's not the caring God like, oh, I care for you. No, I care for you. Amen. Physically care. Just like people who care for the elderly. Doesn't mean, oh, I just care so much for them. No, I literally go and, and I change them and I do their hair and I brush their I care for them. God is a caring God. He literally cares for us. God is very, very hands-on with us. Very hands-on. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house did eat many days. Many days. God told him, listen, I got this woman that's going to take care of you. He said, go make me one first. And then the Lord had already told him what was going to happen. So there we have it. He ate many days over that lady house. Can God use what you have? Or are you saying them? Or you say, thank you. Are you saving them time, money, gifts, food, whatever, for something else? Can God use what you have? Are you saving them? Well, you know, I got to use this for so and so. Can God use? what we have 
Are we saving it for something else? No, I don't. I don't give my tithes and offerings that you. I can't afford to already do. Then you're robbing God. Can God use what you have? Well, you know, people always talk about I encourage them <laughs> right now, and I'm the one need encouragement. Can God use? Yes, yes. What you have? Are you saving it? I got in. The Bible said David encouraged himself in the Lord. Yes. Don't be like David. Come on. You have enough encouragement to encourage yourself and somebody else. Amen. Yes. Can God use what you have? Can God use your time? Well, I don't know. I got to have my me time, and your, your me time is days and days. You ain't doing nothing for nobody else, ever. I need my me time. Well, God said, well, when do, when do other people ever get any of your time to do anything? Mm, mm, mm. Oh, yes, we all need me time. I understand that. But is your me time all the time? All the time I have is me time. What have you done to help somebody else with any of your time? Mm, mm, mm. Children, even if it's nothing but just going, picking up or washing the dishes or wiping down the walls, getting the cobwebs out the corners. With your time, or is it just games and playing and gracious? Gracious. Can God use what you have? Amen. Yes. He's asking. Are you saving it for something else? When God is asking for it. Oh God, no, I'm gonna need this. Wow. Well, be a witness with what you have. That's what the Lord is saying. And please don't be the kind of witness with what you have. And your witness is that they are so stingy with everything. Because that is a witness. That is a witness. They, they're just so stingy. You notice them at the church? Always head straight to the door. Just gone. Wasn't no coronavirus or nothing. They ain't trying to avoid... They, <laughs> They just out the door. Don't want to even share fellowship. Yes, yes, yes. Soon as it's over. <laughs> what do you have that God wants to use? Our own time, our own time. Everything that we have. We can present it to God. Now, I haven't really made this public, but Pastor Hayward and those who started with us, they know that this is a practice that I have. Whenever we get new things, I always dedicate it to God. Always. You know, I really couldn't even dedicate this building to God fully until we paid it off. Really couldn't. But thank God, every time we purchased something, I would dedicate it to God. Lord, this is yours. The chairs, the podium, just everything. Lord, we dedicate it to you. And then sometimes I'd be sitting there and I'd see something. Oh, I've forgotten. So I'll just, Lord, I dedicate that to you. And I said that to say that's what we need to do. Lord, everything I have, as a matter of fact, by the moving of the Spirit right now, just say, Lord, everything I have, I dedicate it to you for your usage. 
do whatever you want to do. And I'll obey. Let God use what you have. And you will see miracles and blessings. I remember this one evangelist who, oh, I so looked up to her. And I got a chance to spend hours with her and just ask question after question after question. She told me when she laid hands on somebody the very first time and they fell out, she looked at her hands like, what? Use what you have. Use what you have as a witness. What do you have? How many of you will say it is easier to believe for somebody else than it is to believe for yourself? Well, then use that. That's what you have. Use it. And it is. And it is. It is easier. On a lot of occasions, we go, oh, I believe God for you. Yeah, you're going to get it. And then when it comes your turn, you're like, now, Lord, I know, I know. And that's why. And, it's, and it's, it's, it's to the point where we need each other. We're not independent of each other. Oh, the devil would love to just come and, and, and just keep us away from each other. Case is day in the morning. You know, I thank God, uh, one of the prophets said that this thing is definitely going to be over. This isn't something that's just going to stay in the air and stay in the bodies. It's definitely going to be over because the devil is really trying. But you know what I'm so glad about? On my way to church, I usually pass um, average of like seven churches. Every church I pass, they have in service today. Every single one. Every single one. They have in service. My father, I just thank you. I thank you. I thank you. And you know, I was, I was talking to Jasmine yesterday, and I was saying it is being reported that people are now turning to the church because this thing is scaring people. So they're turning to the church. And I, and I also told Pastor Nikki in Columbia, and I said, what hurts me is when they turn to the church, the doors are locked. The doors are locked. Or they're turning to the church, and the church is just as scared as they are. They're trying to find every article to discourage themselves, everything online to make them more and more. They're feeding their fear. Don't let people do that to y'all, please. And don't do it to yourself. I mean, how many more times can we hear, wash your hands? Don't touch your face. I mean, how many more times can we hear that? Talk about running out of soap. Wash your hands that much, you're going to need lotion. Run out of lotion after a while. Especially me, I have naturally just rough, dry hands. It was so bad when I was younger, they had to prescribe lotion to me, prescription lotion that had ammonia in it, of all things. I don't understand. But I'm just saying, (laughs) we cannot seek for things that's going to feed our fear. No, we got to be informed. Be informed. Don't be scared. You know when you're feeding your mind for information versus feeding your fears. But God said, no problem. I'm going to be a blessing. And now they're talking about, what is it, April the 6th, I think it is. Talking about everybody getting $1,200. Everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, 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 mm. And then, and then the president uh, said, "This is a few briefings ago. I don't know which one because they've been so frequent. A few briefings ago, that some of the people are like in the government. Our leaders are saying that's not enough. So I, w- I watched him yesterday, and he said it's something big. Something. I said, oh." 
what if they're going to give each of us this amount or that amount? You know, I don't know. But we will see what the Lord does. Then somebody say, well, praise the Lord. This thing is over and I got thousands of dollars in my bank account to boot. The devil meant it for evil. Just in case you wonder why people are clapping, they know the second part of that scripture. But God meant it for the good. For the good. So, Father, we praise you and we bless you. We glorify you and we magnify you, Father. Thank you, Father, for our health. You gave it to us. Thank you for healing. You gave it to us. Thank you for knowledge, wisdom, understanding, the spirit of love that we have, the spirit of power we have, and the spirit of a sound mind that we have. We don't have a spirit of fear. The spirit of fear causes us to seek out things that will build fear, deposit fear, grow fear in us. We will not do it. We will not do it. And Father, when we sense that something we're reading is causing more fear than faith in you and giving you glory and honor, we're going to stop reading it. We're going to stop watching it. We're going to be done with it, Father God, because the devil's not going to trick us. Not going to trick us. Hallelujah, Lord. Lord, this isn't, as you're showing me right now, this isn't a normal virus. They're calling it a virus by the way that it, people are contracting it. But Lord, this is not a normal virus. This, this thing is set up to do something specific. This virus is set up to do something specific, Lord. And as I heard your Holy Spirit call it, this is a tricky virus. This thing is tricky. There are wives getting it and the husbands not getting it. This is a tricky virus and vice versa. Father, I thank you, I bless you, and I praise you right now. Again, that you've given us health. You've given us protection. And we're going to be a witness with what we have, with what we have. So Father, we thank you and we bless you and we praise you. There are things that we have in the natural that you want to use. Our hands, our hands are just as natural as natural can be. Our mouths, lips, tongue, our jaw used to speak diaphragm, our lungs, our vocal cords. Everything we use to speak, Father God, we can, as Pastor Hayward has made it a motto and pushes it every single day, Lord, to speak life. Thank you, Lord. Which he based it on your word. It said death and life is in the power of the tongue. So we speak death to everything that's not your will. And we speak life to people. We speak death to coronavirus strain, strain COVID-19. We speak death to you in Jesus' name. And life to people. And Father, you so framed that scripture. As as you told me, even after I, I, I put that out, you told me. There's a specific reason why you didn't say life and death is in the power of the tongue. You said death and life. You put death first because some things have to die before some things can live. That's why you said death and life. You didn't say that uh, just willy-nilly. You said that on purpose. Death and life. In the power of the tongue. As you said, the seed has to die in the earth. 
then comes life. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. So, Father, we thank you that that is something we have. We have tongues, and we can speak death and life. Death to what you do not even want here on the earth at the appointed time and life to what you do want. You've given us dominion on the earth according to your will and we bless you and praise you and thank you for it, Lord. You're so good. You're so great. You're so wonderful. And we give you glory, praise, and honor and everything that we have, Lord God, we've already dedicated it to you and we did so from our hearts, Lord, from our hearts. So be glorified, be magnified. In the mighty matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 And if you would please bow your heads, close your eyes again. I just want to talk to those who don't know Jesus. You don't know Jesus as Savior. You don't know Jesus as Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, God, be glorified here. Be glorified here. If you've never given your life to God, or maybe you're saying, I, I did, but, but I've left him, and I need to come back to him. Come back to Jesus. He wants you to use your life. It's not just so you won't do this anymore, you won't do that anymore, stop sinning. Yeah, there are things we, we need to stop doing, but there are some things we need to start doing. God wants to use our lives. We have a life. That's what we have. Be a witness with what you have. So if you're not saved, I want you to just simply repeat after me as you're talking directly to God. I'm giving you the words to say, but you're the one talking directly to God. So say, Father, I come before you right now. In Jesus' name. And Lord Jesus, I know you died for me. And Father, you raised him from the dead. Raise me up now, all the way out of my sins. Forgive me of all my sins. Save my soul from eternal damnation and the lake of fire. My life is no longer mine. I give it to you. Live through me, Jesus. Live your life through me. Thank you, Father, for using me. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.